Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today, we are going to be taking a closer look at royalty within the One Piece world, quite specifically the role of a king. One Piece has no shortage of kings, given that just about every island has their own form of royalty, great and small. And when you have such a large sample size, some kings are certainly going to be better than other kings. To be considered for this list, one needs to be recognized as a king in more than just name alone, meaning that you must be officially recognized as a king of a particular nation in an official capacity. So so this means no Pirate King, sorry Roger, and no Sniper King, sorry Soga King. So with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to the Top 5 Best Kings in One Piece. Number 5. Neptune. As king of the Ryugu Kingdom and a man referred to as the Great Knight of the Sea, Neptune is a solid candidate for the title of Best King. Neptune is a simple yet dedicated merman who loves both his family and his subjects very much. In fact, Neptune is incredibly dedicated to his subjects, becoming very protective of even his soldiers, as he has shown that he is more than willing to take attacks directed towards them. However, it should also be noted that he did say that he was willing to trade the lives of his soldiers for his daughter Shirahoshi, and the people of the kingdom were equally as willing to die in order to save Neptune, so there are some sort of weird relationships at play here. But their desire to do that just goes to show how great a king Neptune must be. Neptune is also quite notable through the fact that he did not rule alone, at least while Queen Otohime was alive. He very much encouraged her pursuit of achieving peace with humans, even after she was assassinated as a result. But his constant struggle to ensure a good life for his subjects more than makes Neptune a worthy contender for best king. Number 4. Elisabello II. Making his debut on a Grand Line Top 5 list, we have Elisabello II, the King of Prudence. As a king, Elisabello is very well known for his prowess in combat, so much so that it has earned him the epithet of Fighting King. This is primarily because Elisabello has access to an incredibly special kind of attack, known as the King Punch, which is rumored to have the power to take down even a Yonko. Using this attack, Elisabello was able to create gaping holes in enemy fortresses, paving the way for his soldiers to fight on towards victory. But there is a downside to this attack, which is that it takes a whole hour to charge, making it not such a useful attack in unpredictable combat. But when used strategically, as this king often does, it can be devastating. In addition to his combative abilities, Elisabello is exceptionally proud of his kingdom and is honourable towards his ally kingdoms, thus building healthy relationships and ensuring the safety of his own kingdom. Number 3. Riku Doldo III. And speaking of Elisabello's allies, there is no greater one than King Riku, who reigns as the monarch of Dressrosa. Riku is characterized by a great love of both his kingdom and his people, which makes the story of his reign even more tragic. One day when he and the rest of the kingdom of Dressrosa were just, you know, minding their own business, Don Quixote Doflamingo used his devil fruit abilities to usurp the throne by controlling Riku and forcing him to slaughter his own people. And this completely crushed the king himself, who had tears running down his eyes all throughout the entire ordeal. But even with the people against him, Riku did not give up hope and began competing in the Colosseum in secret, waiting for his moment to dethrone Doflamingo. And when that chance came in the form of Monkey D. Luffy, Riku did not waste a second, and immediately stood up to liberate the people of Dressrosa, culminating in Doflamingo's defeat and Riku's recrowning. And now putting all of that behind him, Riku stands once more to serve the people of Dressrosa, making him one hell of a fine king. Number 2. Dalton here we have the first example of a character on this list who was not born into royalty. Prior to his ascension to the throne, he served two kings of Drum Island, one of whom was Wapol. However, due to Wapol's horrendous treatment of his subjects, Dalton rebelled against him and was consequently thrown in prison. Shortly after, the island of Drum was attacked by the Blackbeard Pirates, causing Wapol to flee, leaving the island in chaos. But being the natural leader he is, Dalton took charge and regained the trust of his people without even the mention of the title of king. However, following Wapol's return and subsequent defeat at the the hands of Monkey D. Luffy, the inhabitants of Drum Island elected Dalton to the position of king, essentially changing nothing except giving him the official title. And that is why Dalton belongs on this list, because he is a man who only ever had the interests of the people at heart and really embodied what it meant to be a king long before his coronation. Number 1. Nefertari Cobra Better known as the father of Vivi, Cobra is the descendant of the Nefertari clan, who are notable in history as the only ancient clan to refuse to leave their homeland and migrate to Marijoa in order to become world nobles. 
Unfortunately, Cobra is another case of a tragic king, as his kingdom of Alabaster was thrown into civil war due to the actions of one Sir Crocodile. As a king, Cobra stands above all others because he isn't one to make impulsive decisions. Cobra will carefully consider the future implications of his actions prior to implementing any form of ruling. And not just for the people of Alabaster, but for neighboring kingdoms as well. For example, when Koza demanded that Cobra use the dance powder to alleviate their drought, Cobra refused, stating that the other countries also need rain. However, in compensation, he offered to support the citizens of Koza's village with money directly allocated from the royal family's living expenses. And during the civil war of Alabaster, Cobra did his utmost most to preserve the lives of his people, even those openly rebelling against him, holding the belief that the people are the true heart of the kingdom. And that pretty much does it for the top five best kings in One Piece. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe, and please do comment with your own favorite kings. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.